So Jason, I'm going to make you work this morning and I'm going to have you guess what today's episode is all about through a little bit of Pictionary here. We got a friend. You probably know him. Uh, who, who, who is that? Uh, uh, Hank? Uh, no. Um, he's kind of got some hair. Anyway. Oh, not so not Hank. Hank. <laughs> yeah. So, and then there's a, a fern of some kind of plant. And then another guy in like this suit. I don't know how to draw suits. But uh, we'll pretend that's a suit with a tie. Oh, no. Well, a suit and tie, is that near Zook? Oh, no. Near Zook never <laughs> wears a suit and tie as far <laughs> oh, as I Oh, that's know. right. A t-shirt, so it can't be near. Right, but they're talking about something. What oh, oh, is? oh, oh, is this, are we going to be doing that special interview with Tacoma Bob and Brad Duncan? You nailed it, my friend. We're going to learn about malware analysis using Wireshark in this episode of Learning Happy Hour. Yeah! Welcome to a bonus episode of Learning Happy Hour with Mitch and Jason. Remember to BYOB. Bring your own brain. Cheers! I'm really excited about this. A few weeks back, we all attended a summit and our team got together. And during that summit, we had a special guest from Unit 42, Brad Duncan. And our very own Tacoma Bob sat down and did an interview with him. And Mitch and I had a chance to actually uh, film the interview and participate in some of Brad's workshop. So Mitch, what were some of the things that you learned during Brad's workshop? You know, I, I, just, I just cannot say enough exciting things about uh, Brad's workshop. And he does these around the country, typically at B-Sides conferences. Um, but he calls it malware traffic analysis using Wireshark. And I'll be honest, I've played with Ethereal or Ethereal, depending on how you like to pronounce it, which evolved into Wireshark for years. And I thought I knew what I was doing. I was a babbling child who had no idea all of the possibilities with Wireshark. And he... He spent you know, a whole day with us showing us just some amazing things and indicators in PCAPs that, that tell you, you know, this is malware or uh, something that is, is masquerading as something else, but it's really not. It's, it's amazing the things that you can see with just a little bit of knowledge. And what's great is he gives away all of this information for free on his website. Um, and I do you know, think that uh, Tacoma Bob had a bucket list item checked off because he acts like <laughs> Brad is his hero. And you could just see the sheer glee on his face as he's interviewing uh, Brad Duncan. So I, I think you guys are going to really enjoy this, this little glimpse into Tacoma Bob with Brad Duncan. Hi, I'm Bob Williamson. I'm here with uh, one Brad Duncan. He's with Unit 42 at Palo Alto Networks. And Brad, can you introduce yourself? Maybe tell us about a bit what you do there. All right. Uh, well, I, uh, I work for Unit 42, which is the public face of threat research for Palo Alto Networks. Uh, we have other threat researchers here uh, in the company that support the customer, that support the product, but uh, our relatively small team is designed to feed information back to the community as a, uh, almost as a public service uh, from Palo Alto Network. So what I've, I've noticed on your website, it's malware traffic analysis, is that correct? The That's website? right. Malware-traffic-analysis.net. So, so it seems like you're, you're willing to share this stuff outside of the corporate environment and more to better the world, I guess? Is, this, is that accurate? Uh, yeah, that is true. I mean, it, it, a lot of blogs, I think, uh, start out as vanity projects, right? kind of a look what I can do thing. And uh, that, that certainly is how uh, mine started out. And uh, I started uh, sharing more and more stuff. I, I can't say why, but it's But it's more than just a blog. I mean, you, you're actually teaching people how to interpret these PCAPs that you're publicly posting. And you go through the trouble of actually showing people how to interpret it if they can't figure out how to interpret those. Well, so really, it's more interactive than just a blog. That's true. Um, so a, at some point, as I begin posting more and more information, I realize that this is a type of stuff that I wish I would have had when I was first starting out. So um, it, uh, that's why I started doing the traffic analysis exercises and uh, um, you know, uh, just setting up uh, so we can help give some sort of experience to uh, you know, my little part. Yeah, I'd recommend anybody check this out because it's a free resource and it's tremendous. I've used it numerous times and I quote you all the time. I've also follow you quite a bit on Twitter. Uh, and I've I noticed that you follow the same sorts of people. So, if you can you speak about that Twitter 
Well, there there, there is a sorts. yeah a Twitter group. Uh, um, so a lot of people hear Twitter and they kind of put it in the same category as all uh, social media. Is that tweet media. or Twitter? Uh, twi Twitter. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I always get those two confused. <laughs> no, no, I've been on Tweet and uh, it's <laughs> it's a it's a different website. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, that's it. So there is a community of us, probably about I would have to estimate about fifty to a hundred uh, of us that uh, tweet. Uh, with any regular basis that are really focused on indicators and you know, where we're talking about IP addresses, domain names, uh, um, uh, URLs, file hashes, information on uh, uh, malware that's currently happening. So I find Twitter is a great resource to uh, A, catch up on what's going on in the uh, commodity malware space stuff that everybody's seeing all the time. And two, if I've got a question, right? There's some private forums and people that I uh, can ask, but it is much, much easier for me to throw a question out on Twitter and it's like, hey, I've got this traffic, I've got this file. Does anybody know what it is? And usually, uh, um, sometimes, almost within a minute or two, somebody will have seen it before and they'll answer back and it'll be like, oh great, this is this so is. So you said the word current. I mean, that, yeah. to say current is almost an understatement. It seems like you guys are on the cutting edge. I mean, some of the stuff nobody's ever seen, and I'll actually go and check the URLs, the IOCs, in Autofocus and some of these other tools, and it seems that you're ahead of these, even these really fast utilities that uh, try to keep up with this stuff. Well, I wouldn't say me personally being ahead, uh, but I would say us as a group, right? Uh, uh, we are able to, uh, we are able to, through our sharing, through our feeding off each other and being able to put it out there publicly, uh, be able to give a, a situational update, as it were, some indicators, a, a, almost a feed, if you will, of information, kind of chaotic, not necessarily organized, but it's out there if you're searching for it. Yes, yeah, so I'm curious if you've noticed any recent patterns or new items that, have, that you've tweeted about recently, you've captured and, and have seen that it's been something that's up and coming. Recently, recently, uh, not necessarily, but uh, within the past year, there has been a, a couple of things on, uh, for example, uh, TrickBot is a uh, malware, an information stealer that's a, a relatively long-lived campaign. It's been around for a couple of years now, a few years now, and uh, every once in a while, uh, you know, either whether traffic patterns are changed or with TrickBot, it's a modular malware. So you get an initial TrickBot infection, and then it will load further malware modules. And a co uh, uh, once or twice within the past year, I've ran across something and it's like, hey, this is interesting. Here's a new module uh, name that popped up as I'm monitoring my infected Windows host and I have no idea what it does. And then I can contact, you know, tweet about it for other people. They'll see it and they'll go like, oh, okay, I, you know, a reverse engineer uh, uh, can get that. Uh, decode that, break it down, and find out exactly what it does. And when we do that, we're able to get that information out there uh, to people relatively quick, uh, you know, before an actual published article. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, that's that like the cutting edge. Yeah. So it, it it really is. Uh, so for me personally, it's like uh, okay, I've uh, happened to stumbled across a new TrickBot module, or I happen to stumble across a particular. Uh, email campaign that's pushing a, a malware that we've seen before, but maybe we haven't seen in a while. Yeah, so Brad, when you say uh, that you're seeing these things, can you give us some idea of how you're actually capturing them? Are, they coming, are you actively pursuing them? Are they coming in via email? That sort of thing. How are these things coming in? Well, uh, there are plenty of online tools where you can get, uh, whether it's through Virus Total Intelligence or there's a service called URL Haas. URL H-A-U-S, that you can uh, do a Google search, and they will uh, provide URLs that uh, uh, um, have you know, generally live samples of malware. So if I'm searching for an campa active campaign like Emotet, I would go there first, get a URL that will give me a, uh, a zip archive or a Word document that I could use to kick off an infection chain. So in my lab, I've got set up a uh, computer, um, a, a vulnerable Windows host, and I'll have an email client set up that has some emails already in it, right? To various emails that I'm monitoring, the recipients that I'm monitoring, right? You know, I'm setting up uh, what you could, you could call an email honeypot, but it's just uh, some email addresses that I have control over, right? right? And, and uh, it includes a couple of email uh, AOL accounts, a couple of Yahoo accounts. Uh, sometimes I'll even use my malware traffic analysis.net address, you know, as messages inside this infected host. 
So when a malware like Emotet infects a Windows host, it harvests, it will search through the address book to find potential new victims. Oh, I see, so you're tricking it into firing for you. So it will fire off, and I can't tell you, since I started doing that about a year ago, um, I have, uh, uh, in many times I'll open my, uh, for me it's a, it's a godsend. Uh, for other people it might be, you know, you might get, uh, you know, be worried that you get malicious spam sent directly to your inbox. But every once in a while when I get it straight <laughs> to my <laughs> inbox, I'm like, this is great. I don't have to go searching for this. All right, woo, time to generate so, up so some you're more avoid, you're actively avoiding the spam filters then. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm uh, doing that as much as I can. But, uh, yeah, you're setting up a vulnerable Windows host, and you're setting it up with information on email addresses that you have control, you have access to, to where... Um, a lot of these information stealers and other types of malware like Emotet will harvest your address book, will harvest your inbox or your sent box and get that information as potential new victims. So you're, you're performing the opposite of a regular person. You're, you're actually trying to infect yourself all the time. Yes, yes. Well, trying to infect uh, uh, isolated lab hosts, yeah, yeah, of right? Course, yeah. That are separate from my uh, from my actual home network or work. Oh, network. see, that's great. That's wonderful. And I, I'll, I'll I will periodically see stuff even months later. So it's a snowball. You start with a small snowball as it yeah. continues. It grows and grows. And now you're the uh, malware tech analysis guy. Yeah, yeah. It uh, it definitely is um, it, being able to you know either grow the infections or or just grow that experience, that information, uh, uh, that the the experience. You know that you get from infecting your own uh, uh, vulnerable clients, setting those up. I mean, it's literally something that took me years to accomplish, to the point where I am at now. But uh, uh, and it's hard to share details on a public forum like this, just because you don't want the bad guys to know yeah. exactly what you're doing. But uh, it's it's great experience, and it, it's something that we need more of in the community. But you have to you have to give a little bit of advice to somebody who happens to find you in Twitter or even go to your site. Is fairly dangerous because you'll see. I know you and these others will post infected sites that yeah I can go to very simply. Right. And uh, but it could be potentially damaging. Isn't that accurate? That is true. And I always uh, try to give some sort of warning. Yeah. There's all kinds of fun stories that we tell. These sorts of things, uh, whether it be dark energy, not pet yet, and these other items. Do you have anything that really sticks out as a good story that people that people can relate to? Now let's see. I, I got one that I can't share the full details for, but uh, so at uh, one of the employers that I used to work at, um, there was a, uh, there was a particular antivirus solution that was triggering on its own definition updates. Oh yes, I remember that. So we would get uh, we get uh, alert after alert, a string of alerts on definition updates. At the time, I was working afternoon and evenings. There was one other guy with me. And we were the only people, uh, you know, responsible for keeping an eye on things. And so this had happened with that particular antivirus solution, that endpoint solution. And then the next day, we started getting similar types of alerts. And me, I'm like, eh, whatever. It's probably the same thing. But uh, my buddy who uh, uh, that I was working with, my coworker, he was definitely, he looked at it and was like, hey, uh, I think this is legit. And what had actually happened is somebody got infected with a, a file replicator, and it had hit uh, um, the, uh, the 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 file share, and it we were getting alert after alert as it was working its way across through the directory tree, and basically in uh, um, replacing legitimate files with itself. Hmm. And, and that happened to happen the same time the false alerts were occurring. It as happened well. the day after the false alerts. <laughs> that makes it tough, then, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, and me, if it, if it were just me there alone, and I thank God it was not just me there <laughs> alone, uh, that that would have uh, continued to a certain point uh, uh, well past where we caught it, uh, thanks to my coworker, where we were able to uh, to get that. Uh, you know, work with some other people and get that isolated before it could infect anybody else. I like else. that. That's a, that's a good story. Ooh. So I, for one, uh, truly appreciate your site, and I appreciate you sharing all this information on Twitter. I mean, it's been wonderful. It's what I do in my spare time just for kicks. So yeah. I would like to shake your hand. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for your time. Well, it was a pleasure.
Thank you for watching this episode of Learning Happy Hour. At Palo Alto Networks, we are strong advocates of continuous learning, and we hope you are too. To continue learning about our fantastic products and services, you can attend a class with one of our authorized training centers, or you can self-study about these products and services through our digital e-learning courses. And if you like this episode of Learning Happy Hour, consider watching this one or this one, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And thanks again for watching.